strong material. Another way of doing it, again, is by using new technology. This technology, I was asked yesterday, when was this technology invented? And I wasn't quite sure if it was 40s, 30s, 40s, or 50s. And it was actually created in um, the 50s by another woodworker who got tired of working too hard. <laughs> So this is another way of, 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 of um, improving a joint like this. What is this joint used for? You could create jewelry boxes. Not much. It's decorative. It's not so strong, just like the uh, um, um, foot joint. It's not a strong joint, but this little detail makes it strong and beautiful. But you don't see your end grains. It's nice and clean. Okay. Now, another joint that we have is the clap joint. The word said it, clap. Okay. It's clapping, putting two pieces of wood together. I'll show you this, this one right here. This is an end clap joint. Take some of the wood off, take half of this, half of the other side, put them together. You created a clamp joint. You can glue this joint, or you could put a dowel through it. If you don't want to put a dowel through it, you can put a screw through the back. This is used for frame. Beautiful, simple. Another way of using this clamp joint is the cross joint. This one right here, I have not glued. When you do anything to it, it's pretty hard. Okay. This has no movement to the side. This one does. But I like the little detail, so I like to put a plug, a, a dowel through this. I keep it traditional. I don't do the screws. Okay? One, pass this one around. And you know what? You can pass all of them around. There's no dowels, and now you can take that one apart. It's just a fit. It's a nice, sorry, that's that's a clap joint, a cross clap joint. That's another. It's a beautiful joint. It's used a lot in yards and crafts. It's a beautiful, simple joint. Now, when we're talking about here, we have the uh, beta joint. Beta joint. It's a simple joint that goes against the grain. If it goes with the grain, it's not a called and dub joint, it's called a groove. Or an across is a dado joint. This joint is used a lot for shelves, for bookcases, for the bottom, and that's how it goes. It's very simple. Again, you could always put a screw, glue it, and it becomes a very strong joint. New technology. This is called pocket hole screws. New technology was invented for all those woodworkers who do not want to work too many hours. <laughs> Because the more hours they work, the less money they make. I was. Myself, the more hours I put, sometimes I think I'm losing money. Because I dedicate my time as an artist to my friends. So, the pocket screw. This is not new technology, really. It's the jig. <laughs> This technology has been used since the Egyptians. And the Egyptians used to do the same, would drill a hole across the same idea and would put a dowel through it. Egyptians did it. I have a little story on that before we have a few more minutes. I went to the exhibit, uh, the King Talk exhibit in New York a few weeks ago with my kids. I thought it was a 
expensive. <laughs> you too. Yeah. Well, because, you know, having a nine-year-old and a ten-year-old son where when they used to go into the museum, they just fly and they don't know what to do. <laughs> so I'm like, inside, oh, this is going to be an expensive day in New York City for a lot of tourists. <laughs> so, I went there, inside. King Tuck did not interest me. There was one item that did, and it was a chair. It caught my eye. It caught my eye. It was, it was, it was the joinery that they created 3,000 years ago. A joinery that we still use today. It was incredible. It was a masterpiece. Okay, because it was still intact. And that's when I said, you know, this show was worth it. <laughs> this show was worth it. It was just that chair that caught my eye and took me to another level of appreciation of a craftsman. Okay? So, where am I? Um, so, with this joint, I was talking about that it's been done for many, many years. A person woke up in the morning and boom, a light came up. Oh, I've been doing these joints for so long and, and it takes me forever. They created a jig, a simple jig. And we kids, if we wanted to drill a hole like this, we start up and then bend down and go through. This person is making millions. <laughs> it's making our life easier too. Okay, this doesn't mean that we craftsmen are against type of joineries, you know, jigs like this, because it does make our life easier. We have to, in order the audience, people who buy a piece of furniture have to understand that it does take a lot of work. And if it does take a lot of work, you will be paying the price. Okay? So, I eliminate some man hours by using this. Do I use this on all my pieces? No. Not me. Okay, I'm a true craftsman. I use this for certain spots that you won't even see it. This has to be held somehow. This is what I use. But I'm more traditional than that. Another, another joint that I do enjoy and love it's a beautiful joint. It's the dovetail. Another old, old Egyptian technique. It's the dovetail. Years ago, people used to cut these pins by hand. Today, technology, and thank you so much for helping us. We have a jig like this. You clamp two pieces of wood and with a router with a dovetail bit. We could create beautiful joinery in no time. Doesn't mean that this joinery is less quality than the one who's using a saw. It's more accurate. It's faster. We have to keep on with demand. Another incredible joint that is one of my favorites. Most of my work is done with this joint. Is the mortise and tie. You've got to be careful with this door because this door belongs to a piece of furniture that I'm making for a client. This is a joint, and I use a machine like this mortiser. I don't use chisels, not all the time to do like this then I'll be that starving artist. <laughs> <laughs> so, to create a mortise like this, I could use this machine or I could use a router. Doesn't mean that it doesn't work or it's wrong. Then I have my nail that I just put in. It has to fit exactly, nice and tight. Just glue it, put pins, this is a strong joint, it'll last longer than we will. And my work and my philosophy and my 
Well, my idea is that whatever piece of furniture that I create should last over 100 years. So, that's one of these joinery, and that's one great example of a stickly piece. Carries the mortise and tenon joinery, but this is a true mortise and tenon. This is a blind mortise and tenon. You won't see it. This one, it comes out. Why do they make it come out? It's not because it's stronger, but it looks better. It's nice. Now, a lot of people, uh, a lot of companies today, they're cheating. What are they doing? They glue everything, take a little piece of wood, and they just glue it on the <laughs> oh. <laughs> so It is wrong. <laughs> Bad for them. <laughs> That's the way um, a lot of companies are doing it. But that motivates me to become a true craftsman because there are not a lot of craftsmen doing work like this today. That's why we are able to charge more than, you know, mass production place or that are using for your entire furniture, these pocket holes. You want something like that? Go to Ikea. That's how it is. Well, that's pretty much it on my joinery, the basic joinery. Hope you had a good time. Thank you. Here's uh, a little bit of my portfolio if you want to look at some of the work, whoever wants to look at it. There's still food in the shop for all of you. I'm going to, before I let the others jump in, um, you're welcome to ask some questions and, uh, and chat a little bit. We need to let them have a little break, but uh, we've got a little time before I let them in. Uh, you use the words jig. And what is that? This is a jig. I know. What is it? Oh. Well, it helps me guide, okay, whether I'm using a router. It helps me guide everything, and I can do multiple of them. I don't have to measure a piece all the time. I'm, I'm creating something. I don't have to measure it because this already has my measurement set. Why is it called a jig? I don't know. <laughs> I just use them. <laughs> the, the wood is all burnt. This this is uh, maple. That's maple. Yeah, I, I got some maple. I didn't uh, create anything with oak because it's harder and it wasn't my hand. I couldn't do much with oak. I've been out of commission for about oh, close to eight weeks. So um, that's not good. I'm happy I was able to make it here and show you some basic stuff. We are too. <laughs> Thank you. We have one more question over here. Have you tried those yet? You know what? I thought about these. Yes. That's um, another dowel. This is another dowel new technology. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I tried them, but I actually make my own. Okay. Um, um, if I'm in a rush job, I would we'll probably buy something like this. Mm -hmm. um, or sometimes I am in a rush job and I'm still making it on my own. Open your scope But one day I would like to try and see how this is. If they make them out of hope. They do. They make them out of different material. The thing about them is it looks very nice because it looks traditional. Right. Even though they're exposed when it's sanded and stained. Mm -hmm. it looks I did. I did a piece, and um, most of my joints have pegs like this that I created, and it was exposed. It was made out of cherry, mm -hmm. and um, that made the piece so beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I, I enjoy these traditional locks. What's the advantage of this? What's the advantage? Well, instead of using um, screws, let's say for example, this this piece right here. I mean, the advantage of that shape versus just an ordinary dowel. Is it easier? Is easier? It, it's in an angle, so it's Taper. easier for you. To, it's tapered, so it's easier for you to push it in further in yeah. and have the glue surround it a little better. Okay. 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 And then yeah, it's a more efficient shape. Yeah. 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 Um, but this could be used for this on the outside. 